Hello everyone, my name is Officer Andrew Frimpong. I'm also known as the Community Resource Officer based here at Framingham State University. So today, what's going to happen is that I'm going to take you guys for a ride along with myself. And what we're going to be doing is going in this lovely cruiser here. And we'll be traveling along the areas of Framingham, also around the campus area, checking out the, the uh, dorms, checking out the local uh, uh, residents, checking out the students, checking out faculty members, basically being just the social butterfly that we like to be around here within the poli uh, p police university campus. So why don't you guys come and join me, see what a, a day of, uh, of the life is as, a, uh, as a, a police university campus officer, and then we'll uh, just basically enjoy ourselves and get to know people as we go around. So come along, ladies and gents, feel free to jump in. This is the main area of the uh, university police department. Um, we have like designated desks here, like they're designated, but not designated to any individual. All our officers can sit, sit anywhere they need to at any of the terminals. And we have the dispatch uh, section over there. Um, and basically that's where all the information and phone calls and everything else that takes place that comes in, goes directly through to dispatch first and foremost. Like I said earlier, that's the entrance way. Uh, we come through here and then we have a couple of into uh, that's the chief's office we have an interview room here we have two interview rooms another one here obviously our evidence room at sergeant singh's office mm -hmm. and also where uh, ramsey sometimes resides And then we have the corridor area, obviously the lavatories, bathrooms, and the kitchenette area here. Awesome. Basically, I'm a foodie. I eat anything, absolutely anything. But more often than not, I enjoy going upstairs, um, enjoy the breakfast, enjoy the canteen area, um, the ram area, and uh, basically just like going up there and having all the great food that's there. Sometimes I'll bring my own food in, but that's, that's, that's kind of rare. But like more often than not, I'd like to go upstairs and uh, you know enjoy the food that's there. So where are you headed? We are headed just to take a, a, a walk around the campus. Um, we'll, go, we'll go down to the McCarthy Lounge or up to the McCarthy Lounge. Again, just showing my face, doing a patrol, making sure everything is okay inside the uh, university as well as outside of the university. So, um, Ideally, this is what I like to do first thing in the morning before my, um, as, as my, duties, my duties start. I like to just take a walk around, but like I said, the campus and make sure everything's all in good condition and, and everyone's okay. There's a particular person here that I always want to check on okay. and just make sure he's okay. So it's part of my like I said, part of my the duties that I like to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you, my good sir? <laughs> Just coming to check on you, see how you're doing. How was your evening? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Do you want another coffee? <laughs> Don't be shy to say yes. <laughs> I'm always happy to, do, to do, get you a coffee. Just, just some extra hash browns, okay. All right, how many you, how, how many did I get yesterday? Uh, six. Six? Okay, so that'll be enough. Okay, all right. All right, no problem. I'll do that in a few minutes, yeah? Okay, then you'll be up here, yeah? Yes. Okay then, all right, no problem. 
I just feel, and my, my colleagues feel, you know, it's, it's a good thing checking up on him as much as we possibly can. And, you know, a coffee and a, and a donut wouldn't, wouldn't harm. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then you've got the student the game room here. Yes, this is, this is where I want to challenge a lot of the students to play foosball. None of them seem to be wanting to play foosball. I heard it's not the most popular game here in the States. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you guys that I'm the foosball king. Yes, I'm putting it out there. I am the foosball king. And I'm, anyone who wants to challenge me at foosball, bring it on. Okay? <laughs> Good. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, hello Miss Doreen. I'm fine. Thank you very much. How's your fine self? Fine. That's good to hear. Come That's to good to hear. Yes, yes, yes. Did you got ladies do anything interesting for the weekend? Yes. No. I did not. <laughs>very kind of you my darling <laughs> you have a better one i'll see you ladies soon thanks again hey my friend there we go okay all right okay then all right have a good one my man all right Yes, so what we're going to do, we're just going to do our regular checklist of the cruisers. So uh, anytime we use a cruiser, the first thing we'll do is go through a checklist to make sure the maintenance of the, of the cruiser is in good condition before we use it. This is the part where it's definitely good to wrap up warm. <laughs> Basically, it's very straightforward, just as it goes. So fill out the name, date, cruiser number, and then we just go down the checklist. Yeah. And all police departments do this. Yeah, the same thing when I was in Wayland. We used to do the same thing before we'd get in, actually get in the cruisers. We'd have to do a checklist of everything. Okay, so this is our panel here. So basically, to switch on the lights, it's uh, this particular button here. And we have a range of different lights that do different things. So basically, so front okay, passenger side okay. Most important thing that we always need to check, well, I, I do personally as well, is the trunk with all the, um, uh, medical stuff. So I'm just going to move the cruiser forward just slightly. <laughs> so again, one of the most important parts of the one of the most important parts of uh, doing your check is making sure this equipment's always here. So in the cruisers, always. We have our AEDs. Always make sure that's in and it's in working order. So again, like I said, just checking, making sure all our equipment's in, in here. Narcan, AED, uh, the med bag. Anytime we go for any medical emergencies, we always carry these two particular items. This is the toolkit for people who if we get, get locked out. Always make sure. This is in there as well. So these are the three main things that you always have to make, make sure are always in the, in the, you know, where stacks full of in, in the vehicles. So as you can see, it's starting to get very busy here. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's great for people watching. And again, it's just making sure our presence is around the, for, the, for the students. Okay, so 
So, what we can do now, I I will take you on a regular, like, routine patrol of what we do okay. during the day. Mm -hmm. First patrol, they can do it in any sequence they want, but I, I tend to do this, this sequence first. So I'll check the maple parking lot. So again, this is part of our regular duties, making sure we patrol the, the area, making sure that all the cars are uh, okay, no broken windows. Um, obviously, making sure there's the, the people who are, are supposed to be here are, are actually um, supposed to be here by the, their tags on, on, on the vehicle. So what I'm doing now, I'm just letting the, the dispatch know um, what cruiser I'm in. So I'll type them the cruiser number and also the mileage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the dispatch knows I start in mileage and, and what cruiser we're in. And basically, that's how we communicate. So when you um, we're in patrol, um, remember I mentioned about the ISOs doing a lot of the building checks and stuff. When they're on campus, they do a lot of the building checks, obviously within the, the, the campus area. As a patrol officer in the cruiser, you have the luxury of being able to go further. So I tend to like to go to the Danforth uh, Museum and do building checks there. Okay. Also to um, the Innovative Center, which is on 860 Worcester Street. Uh, so I'll take you guys down to those two places. My country of origin is Ghana, West Africa. Yeah, uh -huh. that's where I wasn't actually born in Ghana, but yeah, obviously, that's where my parents are from. Um, I've been to Ghana a few times before. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but, um, yeah, but I was born in and bred in West London. Yeah, yeah, West London, UK. Um, in an area called Brentford, which is, um, I don't know how well you know London, but Brentford is uh, a very small part of, um, of um, outskirts of uh the um, outer perimeters of London, near Heathrow Airport, I, I, I would say, uh, which is the, probably the biggest landmark um, that anyone who does travel to the UK tends to travel going to Heathrow Airport. Okay. Um, yeah, and what brought me to the US was um, I'd been doing working with pe people with mental health issues for the longest time, and uh, basically, uh, one of my colleagues uh, that I was working with, he had. He was a recruiter and worked for an organization called Justice Resource Institute in a, in, here in um, Framingham. He actually said to me, would you ever be interested in working in the US? And um, I thought, why not? You know, I've been to the US many a time before. Um, and um, by that time as well, my career was kind of like coming to its natural end because the organization I was working for, uh, unfortunately, the funding had like um, subsided. So I thought this would be an ideal time to just have a bit of a break and see some new landscapes. Mm -hmm. And the original contract was only going to be for three years. And so I thought that was an ideal opportunity to just give myself a break, come to America for three years, work here, and then go back. But as luck would have it, three years turned into six years. <laughs> they wanted to keep me on for six years. And then uh, so I said, yeah, why not? And uh, six years, now has turned into uh, 16 years that I've been here. Yeah, so it was an interesting pathway that led me here. Police was actually founded in the UK. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the first Metropolitan Police was actually founded in the UK. Yeah, um, I mean, crime rates in the UK um, at the time when uh, when policing was introduced was, was one of the reasons uh, why policing was was introduced because of crime uh, the crime rate in London specifically, mm -hmm. and then it just expanded to to, to 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 throughout the world. To be honest, the main difference I'd say was uh, between the UK and here is simply um, firearms. Yeah. In the UK, your local police officer 
patrolling the streets, you will never see him or her with a firearm. You'll see a police officer doing a detail on the street in the UK, never have a firearm. The only time you'll see a police officer in the UK with a firearm is either at Buckingham Palace, uh, the Houses of Parliament, or at a major airport like Heathrow Airport. That's the only time you'll ever see police officers with firearms. When people in the UK actually do see an officer with a firearm, it's like, oh my God, it's like, what? It's like, it's a scary thing. So when I came here to the States and I joined the police force, I had never even held a firearm in my life. For a person who's never even held a gun, didn't have no interest in guns or anything like that at all, to actually be trained in firearms is a big, big thing. But lo and behold, I actually love it now. Yep, I'm a member of the Holliston um, uh, Firearms uh, Club, uh, which I and I go there and I practice regularly because as a police officer here, you have to be trained and uh, in firearms and obviously practice in firearms as well. And uh, one of the, for me personally, it's one of the biggest things that um, that is uh, for me, that's like, it was a challenge, like I said, but it's one of the biggest turnarounds. Yeah. Our role is to not only to check the car parking areas, but also make our, our presence known um, uh, that we, even though this is a place that's kind of relatively off campus, that, you know, that we're always around and we're here, so if, if need be. This door is usually locked, so this is a, that's the reason why I always like to check it. So this is open. So in fact, we can go in this way. This is a bit of this is a bit rare that that door's open. So sign off, please. Hello everyone, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, thank you. I'm just doing a, a, a regular building check here. Oh, okay. Yes, and I heard some, heard some little noises going on. Oh, huh? yeah. We're here for vacation camp. Oh, it's vacation camp today. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sure you ladies will enjoy yourselves there, huh? Yeah, I think so. Excellent, okay then. All right then, well have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Like I said, I like to come in here, do a building check. Um, make sure everything's okay. Uh, it's again, really good extensive trainings by my uh, colleagues that taught me when I first came to Framingham State that it's not only about doing the, um, checks in the car park, it's also making sure you're doing checks in the buildings as well. Because one time, I think um, a fellow officer came in here and this sprinkler was, was sort of like covered in water all coming down here, etc. And if he hadn't come in and checked inside the building and just done a regular patrol check outside, we would have known what would have happened. You know, sometimes when there's people here, just to make, like I said earlier, just let them know that we, we are around. Mm -hmm. Presentation is everything, you know, with, with the police. Uh, not only how you look as a police officer, but also the, the equipment you use. So, you know, you don't want to be coming showing up in a like a dirty cruiser and like stuff like that. No. And Sergeant Singh is absolutely brilliant at that. He always makes sure that all the officers are looking prim and proper, very strict on like having the car washed as well. Yeah. You always have to make sure you're you're ready for any kind of like an emergency situation. 
So hence the reason I backed up like this, in case, in case I'm cleaning out the car and you know, we get a call over the radio for a burglary or something, I have to be ready to just bolt ASAP. So simple things like backing in is always something that gets you, you know, that couple of seconds more. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> clean out the car. I'm not going to lie, it, it was it was hard at the academy. It was physically taxing for a person of my age who I thought was relatively fit. But it's not until I went into that academy that I realized that, damn, man, Woo! I'm telling you, they put you through your paces. The jogging, they would like get you jogging around the campus. And the campus where we were training, it was like situated on the hill. 25 pound sandbags that we had to carry all the time. And I mean, God, those things like feel like concrete blocks yeah. when you're running up, up and down those hills. Um, but the exercises they gave you, like it was a lot of calinetics exercises. Um, and then also the, um, the academic work, loads and loads of reading, and tests and exams. And, um, and it was a night school as well. So during the evening, like you're, when you're doing all those exercises then get, going into class afterwards like you're in the class and you're, you're dropping off like this and then all of a sudden they see you dropping off they say right come on do a run down to the the bathroom and oh my god you have to pick up that sandbag run down oh jeez oh red man it was hard the police force have their own kind of like um strategy of, of, of trying to break you down but in the process, they do build you up as well. I mean, we had real sergeants that would be shouting at you like constantly and everything. But they would also, you get that mentality where you work as a group um, and you, you, you bond as a team as well. Bruce, uh, Officer Nako and myself all went through that the same academy, which was run by uh, Chief Checky. Checky uh, was, was director of the academy that we actually, uh, we went through and, you know, um, he uh, he ran it for two um, two uh, yeah it was two classes that he ran it for and very very successful. I mean the the, the second one that we were in uh, it was a hundred percent success rate of um, all, all the, everyone passing and, and getting jobs. So I mean they he, he ran it brilliantly and I'm not just saying it because you know he's, he's my chief here, but you know it really was a great academy. Yeah, it really really good. Okay, let's get some refreshments, gentlemen, huh? So this is another area that we actually. Um, you know, make sure we like coming from the um, gas station and coming down this area. We always just make sure everything's all right. Again, this is not really our jurisdiction. This is for framing of state police force, but still, so it's good to keep your eyes open and stuff around here. Hey, how's it you, my good sir? Oh, today, trail mix and this vitamin water that I'm really into at the moment. It's the uh, tropical citrus. Absolutely lovely. So now what we're, um, 
well, another part of my role is I like to go into the dorms, uh, speak to the, um, the desk uh, assistants, just introduce myself. Um, I know I've been doing this for the past three or four, um, um, uh, three or four weeks that I've been, I've been in the job. But once a week, I always make sure I pop in again just to see any events that are going on. And like I said, uh, just keep on making my face, uh, uh, um, you know, spread around the place. So, yeah. Hello, how are you doing? Good, good, good. good. I'm just doing my usual popping again. Just say, say my usual hellos and everything else. Uh -huh. This looks interesting. Oh, very nice. You do this yourself? Yeah. Nice. Uh -huh. Hey, may I say that event you had the other day, uh, pizza making? That was really good. Did, did you turn up for it? No, I don't live in this building. I oh. just work at this desk. Oh, so okay, really okay. Okay. Oh, what's this you got here? Games equipment available. Ping pong paddles. Oh, uh, do you have ping pong here? Um, yeah, we have little paddles down here. Right. Does anyone ever play? Yeah. Yeah? Because, yeah, you see, there's two games that I can't find people to play with me here. Foosball and table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, ha if you know anyone who's, a who's interested in any of the two and they want to challenge, let me know. Okay. okay? <laughs> All right then, good seeing you again. All right, take care. <laughs> Hello, my good sir. Right. How's it going? Good, good, good. Just thought I'd pop in again and say hello. I remember seeing you last time, isn't it? How are you doing? Good, good, good. Uh -huh. But yeah, I just wanted to check in, do my usual check in, see how things are going. Uh, good, good, good. There's a Taste of Culture event happening to this evening down at O'Connor. Really? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think they're doing different varieties of food and stuff. So I think that's around about 7 p.m. If anyone wants to go and check it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, down at O'Connor. I think it's in room 120. Yeah, yeah, but. How's studying going? Uh, it's going good. Yeah? Oh, you're not? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay then, my friend, thank you very much. No okay then, take it easy, yeah? So I just want to say a very big thank you for joining me today and seeing how life is as a university police officer here at Framingham State University. And if you ever see me around, please don't forget to say hi. And I definitely hope you actually learned something today. And anytime you want to join me or any other one of my crew members, please feel free to do so. We're always, we're always here to welcome anyone here. Thank you very much.